What is a dynamic equilibrium by kscience.com? A reacting with B in the forward direction forms C and D. And this is a reversible reaction because at the same time, C reacts with D in the backward reaction to form A and B. A and B forming C and D is the forward direction. And then C and D forming A and B is the backward direction. So in a reversible reaction like this, A and B form C and D, and then C and D forms A and B at the same time. Now, reversible reactions do not take place in open systems. This is where there can be a loss of reactants or products because the system, i.e. the container, is open to the surroundings. So an open system is where there can be a loss of reactants and products, whereas closed systems are better for reversible reactions, as the reactants and products cannot get out of the system or the container. So there is no loss of reactants and products in a closed system. This is much better for reversible reactions. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So we've already established, in a reversible reaction, A and B react in the forward direction to form C and D. And at the same time, C and D are reacting in the backward direction to form A and B. We're now going to focus on how in a closed system, a dynamic equilibrium can be reached in a reversible reaction such as this. To understand what a dynamic equilibrium is, we're going to use this graph where time is on the x-axis and rate of reaction is on the y-axis. So at the beginning of the chemical reaction, we have a high concentration of A and a high concentration of B. These are the reactants. And on the graph, the key shows how the red line is the reactants, and this represents the forward direction. And the purple line are the products, and this represents the backward direction. So to begin with, we can see we have a lot of reactants and no products. So this red cross shows there is a high rate of reaction for the reactants at the beginning of the reaction. And this purple cross shows there is no rate of reaction for the products at the very beginning of the reaction. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So as A and B react, their concentration starts to decrease. And as C and D form, their concentration starts to increase. This decrease in concentration of the reactants causes their rates of reaction to start to decrease. And the increase in the concentration of the products cause their rate of reaction to start to increase. As the reaction continues, the concentration of A and B decreases as they react, whilst the concentration of C and D increases as they continue to be formed. Whilst the forward reaction is taking place, do not forget the backward reaction is also taking place at the same time. As the concentration of the reactants decreases, the rate of reaction of the forward direction decreases, shown here on the graph. And as the concentration of the products increases, the rate of reaction of the backward direction increases, shown here on the graph. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. As A and B continue to react, their concentration decreases. And as C and D continue to be formed, their concentration increases. 
Remember, whilst A and B are forming C and D in the forward direction, C and D are also forming A and B in the backward direction. On the graph, the rate of reaction of the reactants in the forward direction decreases as the concentration decreases, and the rate of reaction of the products in the backward direction increases as their concentration increases. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. As A and B continue to react to form C and D, eventually we'll get to a point where the graph shows the rate of reaction of the forward direction is equal to the rate of reaction of the backward direction. The point where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. This means the equilibrium has been reached. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So here, at the very beginning of the reaction, the concentration of A and B are highest and there are no products just yet. And then as the reaction continues at this point in the chemical reaction, as shown on the graph, the bigger forward arrow compared to the smaller backward arrow shows how the forward rate is greater than the backward rate, as the concentration of the reactants is still higher compared to the concentration of the products. And then at this point in the graph, where the rate of reaction for the forward reaction and backward reaction are at the same point, the size of the arrows shows how the forward rate is the same as the backward rate. It's at this point a state of dynamic equilibrium has been reached. The definition of a dynamic equilibrium is a reversible reaction where the forward and backwards reactions are happening at the same rate and when reached there is no change in the amount of products and reactants. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.